Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood, and this is a short video on what I finally figured out about flood fill. Stay tuned. Okay, short and simple. Flood fill is for simple shapes only. Shapes that were created with the ellipse tool, the rectangle tool, or the polygon. If you've created a frame using one of those three tools, that's when you use flood fill, period. Here is a simple frame that I've created using the rectangle tool. This one I have in standard fill, and if we look at the preview, you see all of the scanning of the white space and it's taken nearly 12 minutes. This one is the same one, but I've used flood fill. And if I look at the preview, I eliminate all of that white space and it's down to seven minutes and 30 seconds. This is where I've segmented this frame into four separate pieces and put it back in standard fill mode, but it took longer, seven minutes and 50 seconds. I show you that to let you know, understand that if you're using simple shapes, ellipse tool, circle tool, rectangle tool, square tool, polygon, octagons, all, any of those simple shapes, and you've created a frame, either for an actual frame or just something framing a piece of your artwork, flood fill is ideal for, for engraving those paths. It's going to save you a tremendous amount of time as long as it's a simple shape and you don't need to do anything to them period. If you have a complex shape, it goes right out the window. Flood fill is not your friend. If we look at this, this is no, these are the same dimensions, but this is a complex shape. And if we look at this and we look at the standard fill, it's showing 1056, 11 minutes. If we come over here, this is flood fill. And we go from 11 minutes to nine minutes and 13 seconds but there's lots of extra movement going on down here. And if you look at the way it engraves it, it does it in a jigsaw puzzle manner. It's engraving little pieces here and there, going back and forth and picking up pieces. And that can leave a less than desirable outcome on your image. This is the segmented frame. I've got four objects. And when I look at it, I went from 11 minutes to six minutes and 48 seconds. Six minutes and 48 seconds. Compare that to the flood field over here. It's actually faster with the complex shape and a segmented complex shape. But you don't want to go to the time and the trouble of segmenting a simple shape. Only complex shapes do you want to segment them. And this is how you do that. Now, it is crucial. This will be the most watched part of this video on replay because if you don't do it in the proper order, you will mess it up. But if you get the rhythm down, quick, simple, easy. So I've got this original frame. And I'm going to duplicate that and bring it over here. Now I want to segment this. It is important, it's crucial that this is all grouped. It's one object. Now what I want to do is I want to select me a toolpath and create a rectangle that's going to be start outside the perimeter of that frame and, and I'm not even going to pay attention to the, where it's lining up. But now I'll come in here tight and grab that frame and put it right there on that intersection point only because that's where I want to break this particular frame. You line that up where you want to break it. Then hold shift, select the frame, use your circular array tool, do two copies and group the results. That's going to put you two pieces opposite each other and they are grouped. Now with that grouped, Select everything and duplicate it. Control D. Now you have a duplicate pair of toolpaths and a two frames on top of each other. That's why it looks like it's in wireframe mode. It's a duplicate on top of it. Select 
out, not inside the frame, but outside the frame, select one of those duplicates of toolpaths. Just click on a toolpath, hold shift and select any one, and, and don't drag it. You just got to click on the frame and now use the intersection tool. Boolean intersection of two shapes, A and B. Hold your arrow key and move that over out of your way. Just hold it and move it out of the way. Come back over here and now you need to use Boolean subtract tool. And to do that, we're going to do frame first, A, subtract B, select, hold shift and select the tool path and use this one here, Boolean subtract, Boolean one shape from another, A, subtract B. And that gives me the other pair. Now those are grouped. I can hold shift and select that one and bullseye it and that aligns everything and I come back over here everything is lined up perfectly it's segmented where I want it to there are two objects here but I actually want four objects here let's look at what the preview shows here actually that works that's six minutes 47 seconds you don't even have to bother uh, doing those let's see what that setting is yeah fill shapes individually that's the other trick. If you fill all shapes at once, you put all of your scan space back in there, back to your original 11 minutes. Fill shapes individually. Six minutes and 47 seconds. And that's how you segment a square or a rectangle. You can segment round or elliptical frames using the same technique, but you're going to use a, a square or a rectangle and draw from the center of your frame, your a round or elliptical frame, draw from the center out to it encompasses the top and side of one quarter of that shape. Then do the same technique. We use circular ray to create two copies directly opposite one another and Bob's your uncle you segment it your elliptical and, and or, or round frame this is you, you may find shapes where you go okay well I need to move this you know what they don't have to be symmetrical shapes it's just breaking them down into four pieces so that it can do you know X Y another X another Y or you know four segments you're eliminating the white space that's all you're trying to do by eliminating all that space that it's got to travel and not engrave anything, that's how you save time. So if you want to see how the sausage is made and how I come to these conclusions, it was a combination of talking to Lightburn, Lightburn support, lots of emails back and forth before this noggin finally seen the light bulb, seen the light, and then lots of testing. That video is in the end screen plus in the comments below if you want to look at all the testing I did to get here. But remember, flood fill is for simple shapes only, period. I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood. Hope you found this informative, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.